the meal and the dance show. And I was talking to Tuna earlier, um, I was talking about the motorbikes and how I think it's crazy that people just ride sort of three, four people. But you said people don't have a choice. They are, it is only legal to ride two up and to, you to have a helmet as well. And people do in the cities, but outside they don't tend to bother. Um, but really the police do turn a blind eye when it's children on the bike because they have to get to and from and that's what people can afford is bikes. The same as eating the silkworm, the water beetles, the crickets and eating rats because when people are poor they have to find a way to survive and that's what they do. And yeah, that kind of made me feel quite humble really and feel a little bit guilty for being here eating this buffet tonight. It's lovely food. I'm hoping I'm not making a rich person richer and that I'm putting some money back into Pan Ta Cambodia even by being here and that, yeah, the people will see something for it. I'm sat at a long table, it's a really big hall, I'm sat at a long table, um, mostly laid up for all oh, two, but actually a bunch to three of us down the end here, all single, sat in a line next to each other, so see who else turns up, I guess. There's a lot of really good food here and it's all got all the ingredients down the little card, which is brilliant. Quite a bit of vegetarian choice, a bit carb heavy, but there you go. And I've just arrived. I'm getting quite excited. Got a good old view. Me worried about eating. The chap next to me, the great big plate. I left most of it. I did say hello to him and he said, you're on your own too? And I said, yes. He said, sometimes it's better that way because you do what you want when you want. I said, I agree. But what I also wanted to say to him was, well, I wish Andy was here with me. But I am getting more used to, I'm better at coping with the tables that are set for one. dance because I know all about them. I'm really clever because I had them all written down. So the first dance, these are about the Kirk Karma dances that age back to the Anchor period. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's, it's kind of carrying on with all the, the things we've been looking at this week. So the first dance is called the Tech Monorum dance and it's the dance of the happiness of the gods and goddesses and it's about men and female and the balance of, um, of those in the social interaction. And the chorus, so they're the people in the yellow, and the chorus describe the erotic pursuit of the heavenly maidens by the male celestials, as well as their harmonious reunion, or union, not reunion, union. And also what's really interesting in this dance is the footwork and the handwork. Oh. They mean different openings of flowers. I don't even know how they get them in the position, but just look at the incredible hand work and the footwork. The choreography is amazing. I'll put a little photo here of what the different hand movements mean.
It's a popular in southeastern Cambodia and it's performed at weddings. I love the coconut, the choreography, the tapping, the backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, it's so cool. And I can see that the dancers really enjoyed doing it as well. It's really, really good fun. Uh, and just celebrating the joy and life and harmony of Cambodia. <laughs> crystal ball so if you look closely have zoomed in a couple of times in her right hand she's got a crystal ball which casts rays of um, lightning uh, the goddess and she's the goddess of waters Moni Makala and it's about her triumphing over the demon Re Reem I saw whose axe creates thunder and the two characters illustrate the victory um, of beneficial rains over the dry and stormy season <laughs>
traditional village dance called the Fisherman's Dance. It's about love, it's about courtesy, it's about a cheeky little boy trying to woo a girl um, who's very shy. But does he get her in the end? <laughs> Sparrows were. They were the dancers of the court again in the Ankara period over a thousand years uh, um, ago. And it wasn't Ankara, was it? Ankor. Ankor. Ankor is in Turkey in the Ankor period here in Cambodia. Um, and these are like heavenly half, half angels, half women. They had 37 different hairstyles to depict them all, which is the 37 steps to heaven, 35 levels to hell in Hinduism. So, um, yeah, so this is like depicting this, the dancers that used to dance for the king. And their circular movements and poised motions, the lightness of their gestures symbolise their hovering between the cosmos and earth. Enjoy. <laughs>
Portuguese. Nearly just got pulverised by a van overtaking the Sukta because it was turning into the hotel. But luckily, my driver was on the ball and swerved back in. And oh, it was a very close shave though. After me saying it was so much quieter at night. And I did think I got to grips with the money tonight. They asked for three dollars fifty, so I worked it out that I, that would be equivalent to fourteen thousand of their money. That's for my drink, for my crushed watermelon shake, which was delicious. Um, and I'd get 6,000 of their money back. I, don't, I can't even remember what their money's called, that I'd get 6,000 back, which I did. And then I left 1,000 for a tip instead of 10,000, which is like 25 cents. Oh dear, how embarrassing. Good job I haven't got to go back. Girl in Cambodia, learning to do maths. Anyway, gonna make a nice couple of herbs on nighttime tea. Sit out on the decking area, do a crossword and then get myself to bed. Ta-da for now, see you tomorrow.